I was desperate. But what about my diaper? I couldn't believe I actually said that. My diaper. Fine. Go on upstairs, she said, taking a sip of her coffee. When I'm done, I'll come change your diaper and get you dressed. My jaw dropped. But. Or you can sit there in your pissy diaper all day, I don't care. You want your diaper changed, you're going to get your ass up those stairs and wait for me in your bedroom. She wasn't budging. I slipped off the chair and onto my wobbly legs, and went straight down on the first step. I can't walk like this, sissy. I flopped over onto my backside and stared at her. Then fucking crawl. You're a baby. That's what babies do. Maggie, come the fuck on. She scowled at me and picked up her phone. Fine. Lay there and cry about it then, baby. Shut up you big bully fucking bitch. Her thumbs moved faster, then she set the phone down. My eyes got big as she stood up, towering over me as I sat there, trying to crab walk away from her. She reached down and grabbed my arm. Ow. Her grip was like iron, and she jerked me to my feet. Rip, 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 the outer diaper fell off me, then the inner one, much heavier. She sprawled me across the seat of one of the bar stools, and down came the spoon, again and again and again. She hit me methodically, first the fat part of my butt on one side, then the other, then one upper thigh, then the other. Never the same place twice in a row, and God did it hurt. I went from angry teenager to whining kindergartner, but she kept right on going. I howled in pain, promising and begging and pleading, kicking my legs in the air, but she still didn't stop. Then I went limp, huge, racking sobs making my entire body shudder. Finally, the spoon stopped, and I heard her put it down on the counter. You ain't seen bully bitch out of me yet, you piss -a pants little brat. She pulled my shirt down over my snot and tear covered face and threw it on the floor with the diapers. If you so much as roll over before I get back, we're gonna go another round. Down the hallway she went, and back she came with the changing supplies. She spread a towel on the floor in the living room. On the towel, face down, baby. I walked over on wobbly legs, my backside on fire like it had never been before. Her phone vibrated on the counter behind me, but she ignored it. I laid down on my stomach. One of these days, she said as she pumped what looked like hand lotion into her palm, you're gonna learn when to keep your damn little mouth shut. All you had to do was wait for me to finish my coffee, and I would have changed your little diaper, and put a nice clean t-shirt on you, and I probably would have let you sit on the couch and play your little video game or maybe watch some big boy cartoons or something. She started rubbing the cream into my quivering backside. Her touch stung, but the cream felt cool, soothing. But no, you had to go and call me a bitch. And where did it get you, huh? Nowhere, that's where. It got your ass beat, is what it got you. And it put your sister in a shitty mood, which means all the nice things she was going to try to do for little baby Jamie this morning to make it a little easier went right out the goddamn window. She wiped her hands off with one of the wipes, then covered my as with a mountain of baby powder. She spread a diaper on the floor next to me and said, roll over, baby. I rolled, and it hurt when I landed, but not as much as yesterday after mom worked me over. She wiped me down with a baby wipe in the front, covered me with another pile of powder, and sealed me up. She picked up a small kitchen knife, and I finally saw what mom had done the night before. She cut slits in the bottom of the diaper, then lifted me up and added a second one. Scoot your ass off the towel and sit still. I scooted, and she gathered everything back up and stood. Do not move. I'll be right back. Down the hall she went. And I waited, sulking and sniffling. No PSP. Nothing good to watch on TV. This was really, really going to suck. I heard a door open, and her heavy footsteps on stairs. What the hell was she doing in the basement? How long was I supposed to just sit here and stare at the fucking wall? 
After what seemed like an eternity, even though only 15 minutes had passed by the clock on the wall, I think it was lying to me, I heard her footsteps coming back up the basement stairs, with a whole lot of jostling and grunting to go with them. She shuffled down the hall, and my eyes bulged when I saw what was in her hands. No. No fucking way. I started to scuffle backwards, toward the stairs. I told you not to move, she shouted as she unfolded the huge playpen and slammed it on the floor in the middle of the living room. You're not putting me in that fucking thing Maggie. What are you gonna do, crawl next door with just your little diaper on and tell Mrs. Foreignsworth on me? I'm sure her three daughters would just love to see that. She stormed toward me, and I panicked, flopping over and crawling as fast as I could. If I could just reach. Her powerful arm wrapped around my waist right before my hand got to the railing. No. I screamed, kicking and flailing helplessly. Put me down, you crazy bitch. Put me down. She dropped me into the playpen, and I bounced right back to my feet. This thing was bigger than I remembered, the bar reaching all the way to my stomach. If you climb out of there, this is next. She glowered at me, a leash in her hand. What are you gonna do, walk me around like a fucking dog? I stretched my leg up, but my foot came just short of the bar. Just a little further. Come on. And then my foot was in her hand, and with a push, my backside was on the mattress. No, I'm going to do this. She cinched the leash down onto my ankle, poked a hole in the netting near the bottom, and pulled it through, wrapping it around the leg of the playpen outside, out of reach. Now, go ahead and call me a bitch again, you little creep. She walked over to the counter and grabbed her phone, swiping the screen and typing furiously. Fuck you, bitch. Beat me all you want. I don't fucking care anymore. Do you hear me, you fucking cunt? Do your worst. Now I'm a cunt too, ha, huh? she muttered, still staring at her phone. I started wrestling with the buckle on the leash around my ankle, but she ignored me. She finished typing and stood up. By the way, this was what mom sent back this morning after I told her you called me a bitch again. She turned the phone toward me and shoved it right in my face. Well, he just bought himself two more days in diapers. And tell him if he calls you that again, he won't see those pull-ups until school is out. I went cold. Maggie's reply, which she obviously just typed, sat there directly underneath. Now I'm a bitch and a cunt, apparently. She turned the screen around and grinned at me. Hope you like pissing and shitting in your pants, you little rodent. The phone vibrated. She laughed and typed some more. I forgot all about the leash and squirmed into the corner of the playpen, recoiling at what I'd just seen. Two more weeks of this? Her phone rang. Hi mom. Sure, he's right here, just a second. I looked at that phone like it was made of poison cancer virus, cringing as Maggie brought it over and handed it to me. Timidly I reached out and took it. H, hello, mommy. You shut up and listen, you disrespectful little bastard. I don't want to hear a word out of your foul little mouth until I get home. I raised you better than to say such filthy things to anybody, never mind your own family. Now, when I get home this evening, I am going to feed you supper, spank the living daylights out of your bratty little ass, and put you to bed. But here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to tell your father about this. But if you don't do exactly as Maggie and I tell you to do from now until we leave for the beach house, he's going to hear about all of it. And I don't think I need to tell you what your father will do if he finds out you used the c-word on your sister. I gulped, but stayed silent. Truth be told, I couldn't imagine what dad would do, but I damn sure didn't want to find out. Now, put me on speakerphone. I pressed the speaker button with a trembling finger. Maggie, can you hear me? Yeah, mom. Did you order his new diapers? Yeah, a full case, like you asked. Are they bringing them today? Should be around lunchtime. Oh good. Make sure you tip the driver, 
and go ahead and order two more cases, since your baby brother decided he'd rather start his potty training at the beach this summer. But the beach trip was a month from now. The tears came rushing back again, and I couldn't stop them if I wanted to. I held the phone up weakly with the one hand, and buried my face in the other. For weeks of diapers. Okay. I will, anything else. Yeah. After you feed him lunch, change his diapers and put him down for a nap, whether the delivery is there or not. Only an hour or so, though, because he won't sleep tonight otherwise. And he can stay in the playpen the rest of the time. I'm pretty sure there are some boxes of yours and his old baby stuff right near where you found the crib, it's probably marked yard sale. Use whatever you can find, just make sure you wash it thoroughly. Until little JJ learns to stop having tantrums, he's going to be treated exactly how old he's acting. Got it, mom. I saw that box down there along with some old videos I was going to bring up for him to watch. What do you want me to fix for dinner? I'll text you about that later. I can already hear him bawling. I gotta go. Love you both. The phone went dead, and Maggie was right there to snatch it. There you go, little buddy. I did my worst. You wanna try it again? No. You gonna stay in that playpen while I'm downstairs? Yes. Good. Cause I'm pretty sure mom won't hesitate to extend your little punishment out through the beach trip too. I shuddered at the thought. Her footfalls led back down the hall, down to the basement, to bring my doom back up with her. I finally went too far, and now my life was over. It was all of quarter after ten when Maggie finished this horrible, awful treasure hunt of hers. Stuffed animals of various shapes and sizes now covered the floor of the playpen. The dishwasher hummed away, full of baby bottles, toddler plates, and pacifiers, though she took the trouble to hand wash a white pacifier with a purple and pink butterfly on it and stuff it into my mouth. Matches your pretty diapers, she said. Well, it certainly did that, for a variety of reasons. She even found a box of old DVDs down there. I thought for sure she'd torture me with Teletubbies and Barney and all that crap, but her old Sailor Moon collection was hardly an improvement. Still, it gave me a distraction from the much bigger problem I had, that of a growing pressure in my gut, moving downward. I knew I could hold it, probably all day if I had to, but that wasn't going to make it go away. But for now, I just wasn't ready for this. So I watched prissy teenage girls dance around and do weird teenage girly superhero stuff, and I gnawed on the silicone nipple, and I did my best to ignore it. The dishwasher finished its cycle, and Maggie got up to empty it. I couldn't see what she was doing from my position, between the high bar of the playpen and the counter itself, but she spent a long time fidgeting with something over there, and I started to get suspicious. Finally she took something over to the fridge and began filling it with water from the built-in dispenser. In my gut, I knew, and she confirmed my suspicions rather quickly as she screwed a nipple onto a bottle and brought it over. You look thirsty, baby boy. Sissy brought you some nice cold water to drink. She leaned into the playpen and held it out to me. I didn't move. If you drink it all up, Sissy will let you have a sippy cup with your lunch instead of another bottle. I had to admit, after all the crying and screaming and yelling I'd done that morning, a little cold water would be nice. I took it and spit out the pacifier. What difference did it make? Either way I had a nipple in my mouth. At least I was getting something out of this one. She sat down on the couch and stared at me grinning. One way or another she was going to wind up humiliating me, might as well get it over with. I put it in my mouth and tilted my head back. To my surprise, it started dribbling almost immediately, before I had a chance to do anything with it. I sucked, and got a lot more than I was expecting, I nearly choked on that first gulp. She must have done something to the nipple. I looked up, she was sitting there with her hand over her mouth, stifling her laughter, staring at me intently. I scowled back at her and tipped it up again, sucking hard, determined to empty it as fast as possible. 
8 ounces of ice cold water doesn't seem like a lot, until you're trying to suck it down through a nipple. I had to stop for a breath once, but I finished it in less than a minute and tossed it aside. What a thirsty baby. Does JJ want some more? She was openly giggling now, not even trying to hide it. No. Where's your binky, baby? Find your binky. Ah. I looked around in the mass of soft toys between my sprawled legs and located the pacifier, brushing it off and putting it back in my mouth. What a good baby you are. Let's put another video on for you before lunch. I looked at the clock, it was just 11 now. Maggie said the new diapers would get here around lunchtime. Maybe I could talk her into letting me use the toilet when they got here. I could hold out until then. Miserable though it was, the courier finally showed up 45 minutes later. And thankfully, either Maggie wasn't inspired to invite him in or he didn't have time. Either way, he didn't see me. What really creeped me out was the massive grin plastered across Maggie's face as she carried the huge box in from the foyer and plunked it down next to the couch. So, do we need a diaper change, baby boy, or are we good right now? This was my chance. I took the pacifier out and said, well, no, but I really have to poop. Could you? Oh wait, you called me a cunt and a bitch, and now you want me to do favours for you. Damn it. Please, ma, sissy, just this once. I'm sorry I said all that horrible stuff to you. And you even took your binky out without my permission. Ah. I stuffed it back in. Please shishy. I'll be a good vavy fro now on, I fromish. She laughed. Tell you what, Jamie. She took the pacifier out of my mouth. Let's talk business. I'll let you go potty. In fact, I'll even talk to mom and make sure you get to go poopy on the potty all the time, but it's gonna cost you. What could she possibly do worse than this? Okay, what do I have to do? I'll show you after lunch. You want to go potty or not? I didn't like this. But again, I was already sitting in a playpen in a diaper, and I'd already been made to drink out of a bottle, and be spoon-fed. There couldn't possibly be anything worse than this, other than. Wait, you're not gonna make me go around outside dressed like this, are you? No, no, nothing like that, silly baby. She laughed. So what's it gonna be? You gonna give me a poopy diaper to change, or do you want to go potty like a big boy? Besides, I bet you're sick of being all double diapered like that, aren't you? Don't you wanna try on your new diapers? I sighed. Okay, okay, deal. Her smile got even bigger as she tucked the pacifier back in and dropped the side of the playpen. Always knew you were a smart little baby boy. Come on, I'll take you to potty. She reached down and unbuckled the leash. If you promise not to try and climb out anymore, I won't put that back on you this afternoon. I frovish. She cackled. So cute. Come on out, baby. I got to my feet and held onto the rail as I wobbled out. She held my hand on the way to the bathroom, which I was grateful for, as much as the mass between my legs disrupted my balance. I could hardly wait to get changed into a single diaper again. She took me to the powder room and stripped the two diapers off me, then stepped out into the hall to let me do my business. Come back out to the living room when you're done, Jamie. I'm going to fix your lunch. I heard her walk away, and as I dropped the pacifier out of my mouth I resolved to take my sweet time, considering this would probably be the last time I'd see a toilet today. And so I did, sitting there naked, enjoying the air on my crotch, waiting for nature to take its course. I had a nice long pee as well, and I basked the satisfaction of completely voiding myself like the teenage boy I was supposed to be. I wasn't looking forward to having another diaper put on me, but at least it'd be O-N-E diaper, so I'd be able to walk. As I wiped, I felt in fairly good spirits for the first time since Friday afternoon when the nightmare began. Whatever Maggie had in store for me as part of this bargain couldn't be any worse than the morning I'd just had. 
I walked out of the bathroom, naked as a jaybird. An empty mac and cheese box sat on the counter, and the noodles were boiling away in a pot on the stove. Well it's about time. Maggie was sitting on the couch with something very big and very, very pink. Come on over and get your diaper on. My heart sank. Pink. What the hell? Mom said to find the most absorbent diapers I could in your size. These are it, buddy. Rear's princess, is what they call them. Now get over here so I can get back to fixing your lunch, baby. I trudged over, and she spread the thing out on a towel. It was much bigger than the Moldicare or whatever those purple things were. I lay down on it, numb to the humiliation. What the hell kind of weirdos ran around in pink adult diapers with unicorns and princesses all over them? I stared at the bag sitting next to me as she powdered my front and rear. Princess Pink by Rears. Level 10 protection. She pulled the front between my legs. Good God, this thing was big, and thick, and bulky. It rode all the way above my belly button, almost to my ribs. And my legs forced apart nearly as far as with the double diapers. This was hardly an improvement at all. As she pulled the tapes across my hips, then my stomach, she sat back and clapped her hands. That is so adorable. All right, get that pink little bit of yours back in your playpen while Sissy finishes making lunch. I lay there, arms crossed, glaring at her. Oh, okay, you need some help. She walked over to the playpen and raised the bar, then I felt her arms underneath me, hoisting me up while I squirmed. She dumped me into the playpen. There you go. Princess. Shoo off. Hey, if you're missing the purple one so much, I bet I could put one on under your pretty pink one next time I change you. She cackled as she stirred the pot. I stared at my crotch. I wanted to rip this thing off and throw it at her. But I didn't. I sat there and stewed, and I made her carry me over to the kitchen and plunk me in a chair. In front of me sat a plate of cut-up hot dogs and a puddle of ketchup. Out of reach was a plate of macaroni and cheese, obviously made for a toddler, though there was a full-size spoon in it. She took my pacifier out and said, Eat up, princess. Can I have a fork? No. Forks are for big kids. Fine. I picked up a slice of hot dog, dunked it in the ketchup, and stuck it in my mouth, but not before a drop of ketchup hit my chest. I tasted it, she watered down the ketchup. What the hell? Maggie watched intently as I worked my way through the slices as quickly as I could, dribbling ketchup water all over myself. I put the last piece in my mouth, and she said, Good job, baby. Let's have some mac and cheese. She overloaded every single spoonful, so I wound up with cheese and ketchup all over my face, and some of it even landed on my, the diaper in my lap. When she finished, I glared at her. Did you enjoy yourself? Was that fun for you? Well I don't know about me, but it sure looks like you had a good time, messy baby. Let's get you cleaned up and get a nice bottle in you so you can go have a nappapoo, okay? She pulled several wipes out of the container and nearly smothered me with them. Nappapoo? Really? Mom said in our nap. I figure you can go have a little snooze, then I'll get you all nice and dressed and cleaned up for when she gets home, so maybe she'll be happy to see you instead of ready to kill you like she was this morning. Did you, MMMPH? She shoved the bottle into my mouth before I could finish the sentence and held it there. Enough talking. Drink. I drank the bottle as quickly as possible, just to get it over with. Good. She stuffed the pacifier back into my mouth. Now march your crinkly little tushy upstairs and lie down. And if I catch you playing video games instead of laying there quietly, Mom will be the first to hear about it. Fine. I got up and waddled up to my bedroom while she stuck her nose back in her phone. Spending the day lazing around the house in just your underwear is a rare treat. Except when your underwear is disposable. And pink. And has unicorns and princesses and stars all over it. 
oh, and your big sister is determined to torture you every second of the day. I flopped out onto my bed and stared at the clock on my dresser, gnawing on the teat in my mouth. An hour. An entire hour to just lay here and do nothing. With a girly-ass diaper and a girly-ass pacifier to match. I was pretty sure I was going to die of boredom. One minute. Two minutes. Three minutes. Wake up sleepy baby. My eyes flew open. The clock, what the hell? I actually fell asleep. I sat up and rubbed my eyes. Maggie didn't seem interested in waiting, so she grabbed my arm. Hey. Time to get dressed, pink bottom. Wait, my clothes are in here. Not anymore they aren't. Time for your end of our deal. I had no time to think, I was just being dragged along straight into my sister's room, confused and increasingly anxious. After she plunked me on the bed, she closed the door, and I died. Well, I wished I'd died when I saw what was hanging on the back of the door, anyway. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I remembered that dress. Maggie wore it when we went to an Easter egg hunt. She was seven, I was almost four. It was solid pink, with a big rose right over the left chest and a little bow on the right hip. I... Nope. No arguing. This is our deal. You got to go poopy in the potty, instead of in your diaper, and I'll make sure you continue to get to do so for as long as you're wearing those cute little princess panties. But you're gonna wear pretty little things that match those little princess panties, and sis is gonna do up your hair and make you the prettiest little toddler girl on the block. And if you even think about trying to back out now, this goes on your snapbook wall for all your friends to see. I gaped as she turned her phone around. She had the security camera going in the living room this morning. My mouth gaped as I watched myself pleading and begging and sobbing, bent over that chair while she whacked me with that horrible spoon. You wouldn't. Wanna bet. I sat there and shivered. That video would be the end of me at school. I hung my head, this was it. I should have seen it coming. First the purple diapers mom bought, then these faggy girly printed ones Maggie picked out. All the baby stuff from downstairs all coming from Maggie's boxes, not mine. I should have known her old clothes were down there too, and she was just waiting for the chance to make me wear them. And that's exactly what I did. She put that dress on me, and all I could do was whimper as the soft cloth draped over my chest. She pulled my scruffy hair into pigtails on either side of my head, clipping barrette onto them to hold them in place. She even put blush on my damn cheeks. Then she stuck me in front of the full-length mirror on her closet door so I could see just exactly how it all looked. Powder pink diaper sticking out under rose pink dress, with pink barrette and a pink pacifier and rosy pink cheeks. All that was missing was ankle socks and pink shoes, and I'd be ready for the toddler beauty pageant. And this was what I had to look forward to for the next month. And there I sat on the private beach in Old Orchard, in a pink sleeveless blouse with a ruffled hem, same pink diaper underneath, same pink pacifier in my mouth. I couldn't believe how the whole situation had gone this far. I did everything I could for the entire month to stay out of trouble, and when we finally got to the beach house, mom informed me that, since my behavior had improved so much since I'd been turned into a little girl, that she was going to keep me that way. And dad even agreed. It spared my bottom around under his belt, and that alone was worth it. He even had one of the rooms renovated into a full-blown oversized nursery, with a crib and a changing table. And it was all, pink. My parents sat under an umbrella behind me, doing the, I missed you so much, thing, while I sat there with a plastic pail and bucket, digging in the sand, sucking my pacifier. I peed, and it didn't even faze me. Heck, I barely noticed it. I wondered if I'd ever get potty trained in time for school. The way mom and dad were talking, they were going to send me to a private school, as an eight-year-old incontinent trans girl with an emotional disability. Well, I wouldn't be the shortest kid in the class anymore. I'd still be the baby, though. Apparently that wasn't going to change anytime soon. 
Mom had suggested going to the doctor and getting the puberty stopper shots for me. I'd be expected to tell everyone I felt like a little girl inside. In this get-up, I kinda did. And in a way, I liked it. I liked being pretty, and I liked being fed and changed and dressed up like a little doll baby. I even had grown to like pooping and peeing in my pants whenever I felt like it and just doing whatever it was I was doing until someone decided to change me. It was fun being a baby girl. And if I had to go back to third grade to keep doing it, then welcome to third grade, Jamie Ann. I happily suckled and dug and wiggled my crinkly butt, excited about my future as a baby tea girl. My eyes flash open. I'm covered in sweat. I sit up and look myself over. Nope, I'm still 47 and fat, my crinoline baby doll nighty covering up my beer belly, though it does nothing for my hairy arms. My big fat rears princess diaper is swollen and heavy. I cheer to myself that I'm finally wetting the bed, after years of trying. Through the bars of my custom-made adult-sized crib, I notice my computer screen is still lit. What a dream! I reach up and let down the latch on the crib bars and climb out, delighting in the rustling of the nighty and the diaper, especially how the latter gives me a waddle now that it's full of pee. This is gonna make an awesome story. I sit down at my computer chair and start typing. Mom's arm was latched so tight on mine as she marched me through the front door of Jefferson Middle School, I thought she was going to break it off. I.